CDP. Uh, and now uh, let's see how a CDP powers personalization and scale. So now I'm gonna go kind of like to the other part of activation. I'm gonna talk about kind of like, you know, this idea of, of CRM marketing, personalization, CRM campaigns, retention marketing. How does a CDP actually power that and how does that happen? I'm still gonna keep it high level. So no, no, I'm not gonna do a demo or anything. So that's, and, and feel free to ask questions as before. So let's talk about the consumer revolution. So who is the new age consumer, right? So first of all, it's a consumer with selective loyalty. So they're no longer as loyal as they used to be, right? They got more choice, they have more places to go. They're of a different generation, kind of like a lot of them are millennials and Gen Zs. So that's the, the new consumer. Uh, they do expect, they have a different bar, right? They're, they're very, you know, they, they expect relevant communication. They expect personalization. They expect a lot more from you. They expect a better experience. They don't like when things don't work. They're not as forgiving as their parents, right? They're not as forgiving. And lastly, they buy a lot, a lot more online, right? They just buy online way, way, way more than their parents and their grandparents. And those three things existed two years ago. And during COVID, it probably accelerated, uh, you know, within 18 months, we probably accelerated by six years, probably 4X acceleration for sure in 18 months. So everything was accelerated by COVID-19. And if we look at the state of CRM marketing, and I've been doing this for many, many years myself. So what do we see? And I'm like, well, what's happening in CRM marketing? So first of all, uh, the tech is better than ever, right? So I've been talking about the same things for you know 10 years ago, but today we are so much closer to actually achieve them. So we got the data technologies are much, much better. We got those crazy databases like Snowflake and Firebolt and, and uh, you know, uh, BigQuery and things like that. So it's in the cloud, endless compute power. It's, it's very expensive, by the way, but at least you can do it. Uh, so the data, the real-time technology, we got Kafka streams and PubSub and Kinesis, and you can stream real-time data into those queuing systems. And uh, you're not limited, you can ingest everything. Again, it costs you money, but like the scale is endless and you got great messaging technologies, right? You can reach people via ad platforms like Facebook and Instagram and, and you can, and, and retargeting, and you can reach people with, with web push and push and SMS. And then, you know, the messaging technologies are getting better and better. So the tech is way, way better. That's one thing. And we know that CRM marketing delivers very good ROI. When, when you speak to customers on a personalized manner, they reward you with loyalty. They reward you with, with purchases and, and, and uh, engagement and word of mouth and, and it works, right? So, uh, and we talked about how we measure things before to the questions. So we see that the top brands that use us, they can attribute up to 33% to the revenue of the revenue to CRM marketing. So imagine if you're doing 300 million a year, you can say because of the personalization element of the business, 100 million can be attributed to that. Obviously that's the best people that do it. The average is 10%. Right, the average is ten percent. It's not thirty-three percent, but and the lower ones are are like uh, two or three or four percent. So sometimes, so the ROI is very very high. We get really good ROI on CRM investment because, you know, it's not it's not at we don't we don't we don't pay Google and Facebook for the clicks, right? It's already our own customers, right? So we can just better engage with our with our first party data. And the ultimate challenge is scale. So if you want to run, you know, five segments, 10 journeys, seven journeys across 12 segments or something like that, you can manage, right? You can manage. But, but think about all the work that needs to happen. You need to get the data right. You need to get the data piped into the same place. You need to build the audiences, uh, create the flows and the automations, uh, write the brief for the design and the studio. Like it's a lot of marketing ops. There's a ton of marketing ops to do CRM marketing properly. And data is, is the biggest enabler, right? But there's more things to do. So if I wanna be really personalized, I don't wanna do just kind of like one campaign a month and go back to my executive and show, look, you know, the new churn campaign just generated 
whatever, you know, $200,000 of, of uplift. Fine, but I don't want to celebrate one thing. I want a machine, right? I want, I want this thing happening all the time, all the time. I want this thing happening. I want to delight my customers at every possible junction, at every possible state in their life cycle. I want to go in and tell them something relevant to, you know, to boost their lifetime value, to, to boost their loyalty. So that's really difficult. So why? Why isn't it happening? Why is it so hard, right? So on the left side, this is what CDPs are trying to do, right? We don't have enough data. Uh, the data is not accessible to marketing teams. There's many different data silos. Uh, they're dependent in data experts, so they need to ask somebody from IT to run some kind of an analysis for them. They don't have enough access to data, uh, ability to discover insights. All of those things do not exist well enough. So that's one of the reasons, because if I do have more access to data, I can create more segments, I can have more ideas, and I can push those ideas into production. So when data is preventing me to do that, I have to ask for favors and get different departments involved, and that takes a lot of time. And the second part is no test and learn. In order to run hundreds of segments and hundreds of campaigns, you need to be able to know very fast which ones are working and which ones do not. So it goes back to when you run those campaigns, those campaigns need to be ran as experiments, right? As scientific experiments where you can uh, very quickly understand which ones of them work, which don't work, which ones you need to kill, which ones you need to keep, which ones you need to refine. Uh, this entire philosophy of test and learn and optimization and in there, you need to be able to use machine learning to tell you, hey, don't worry about those ones, these ones, right? Here's five campaigns that I'm telling you to kill because I looked at the data and just trust me. And then you just click a button, right? So to manage hundreds of campaigns and hundreds of experience, sorry, experiences, sorry, experiments, you actually need to have kind of like a test and learn mentality with all the tech that goes with it. And lastly, you cannot, we, you cannot be running it's like this concept of a multi-channel marketing hub. You cannot be having an email team, a mobile team, an e-commerce team, a website team, and all of those teams, each one of them, they have their own goal and they don't talk to one another. So there's one customer, you go to, you get emails from the emails team, but at the same time, the website is trying to tell you something else. You know, uh, uh, so that's another problem that basically it creates a messaging that's not symmetric. Right, and it's and it's uh, and so, so there's a ton of redundant work because they each walk in their own silo. So those are the things that prevent personalization from scaling. And if you think about uh, about optimization, uh, like the test and learn component, uh, we are kind of like in this in this CRM revolution, which is very similar to ad tech. So if you remember. 10 years ago, uh, you had this kind of like performance marketer that that person was kind of like the god of the marketing department. He or she would know uh, how to find the best uh, CAC to LTV ratio or LTV to CAC ratio. They would find uh, how to, you know, drop your PPC spend uh, versus the ROI that you're getting, what ad copy works versus what doesn't. They had great intuition. They were very technical and they were like the wizards of ad tech. And if you had a person like that, you would drive a lot of growth. And what happened throughout the years is basically Google and Facebook democratized those capabilities. So now you just need to say, here's my budget. Here's five different pieces of creative. And you say to Google or Facebook, just kind of like optimize by impressions or by clicks or by ROAS or by this or by that. So we are leading the same, same type of evolution in CRM marketing. What we're saying, instead of the marketer building the CRM journey with, rule, with rules, right? With rule-based approach that you say, oh, if somebody bought, I want to show them this. If they didn't buy, I want to show them that. If they opened the email, I want to show them this. If they didn't open the email, I want to show them that. I want to send them this message or this, that message. So all the burden and all the decisioning falls on the human uh, and it's not scalable. That's what we're saying. It's very much not scalable. So our approach is the human says, here's all the different things I want to say. Uh, and now the customers are just to just become eligible to different messages. So I'm eligible today to five different messages. The machine chooses one or two. The next day, the machine is going to choose another one. 
And my journey is just being mapped by the AI. So that's our approach to optimization. It's the same revolution that happened with that tech. So last but not least, kind of like to boil everything down, how do you create this personalization at scale? How do you reach a, a higher lifetime value of your customers? It's essentially a, the CDP gives you the data, right? Gives you the access to data and insights. You have an orchestration engine that's essentially, essentially the built-in experimentation optimization it's over here. And it's a multi-channel marketing hub. All of that goes into this AI map customer journey machinery, which gives you personalization at scale. 